Hey guys, it's Natalie and it's the second video in the Reese Witherspoon Book Club Review series and I am so excited because we are going to be talking about four books this time. We will be reviewing two books and introducing two books and the two new books look fabulous and the two books we will review also were fabulous. So let's jump on into it. <laughs> The March book club pick was The Night Tiger, which I've talked about a little bit, but I have only given you just a little bit because I wanted you to wait for this video. Well, this video is now here, so let's get into it. It is by Yangtze Chu, and I told you that it is a beautiful cover. It is even more beautiful inside. There are two main characters, Ji Lin and Rin. Ji Lin is an ambitious young woman. She is working as an apprentice dressmaker, but she's also having to moonlight as a dancer to pay off her mother's gambling debts. One night as she's dancing, and that's all she does, she just dances, and I don't mean like exotic dancing, I mean just dances. This is set in 1930s colonial Malaysia, and they would pay women to literally go on the dance floor and dance with them, and that is what Ji Lin does. One of her customers leaves her a bottle, a little bottle, with a finger in it. No, you didn't hear wrong. I said she was left a little bottle with a finger in it. And finding this finger and having this finger sets her down a very dark path. Our next character is Rin, and Rin is a houseboy who really needs to help his master who's passed away. His master, before he passed away, told him, I need you to find my finger and bury it with me or I'm going to be forced to roam the earth and wander the earth forever in a very uncomfortable way. So you're probably wondering, um, is it the same finger that Ji Lin found? I don't remember. Hmm, might have been. Might have been a completely different finger altogether now that I think about it. Huh, it's been a while since I read this. I don't remember. I guess you're gonna have to read and find out. Sorry guys, I forgot. There's also all these really unexplained deaths happening around the community, happening around the hospital, and there's rumors of men turning into tigers, so we don't know if that's what's happening, but then some of the deaths are happening in places you would never see a tiger. So a lot of mystery around why all these people are dying in these really weird and strange ways. In this book, we also have a very forbidden love that was wonderful to read about. And we have characters who don't know each other but are meeting each other in their dreams, which I thought was really cool. And if I haven't sold you on the book with that, I'm going to read just a few quotes from the back from people who enjoyed the book from some critics. USA Today wrote, From whodunit to ghost story to coming of age to romance, there is enough plot to fill several more novels. But the beguiling tale makes you hope Chu is the author who writes them all. Good Housekeeping wrote, A captivating love triangle with echoes of traditional Asian myths. And my favorite one was written by San Jose Mercury News. And they wrote, Impressive takes readers on one of the wildest rides since Alice fell down the rabbit hole. So guys, this book was a five star. As I've told you, even though Reese Witherspoon is my favorite actress, you do know that for the February pick, I gave it three stars, so I'm not being biased. This was a five star read, guys. I can't imagine anyone not loving this book. Super great, pick it up if you can. All right, and the April book club pick was a very popular novel. It was Daisy Jones and the Six, and I'm pretty sure that you guys have heard of this one. This is also by Taylor Jenkins Reid, who did The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. If you enjoyed that, I'm sure you'll enjoy this. And if you didn't enjoy that, I still think that you will enjoy this. What made this book so great is it talks about a rock band in the 70s, and it's so realistic that if I didn't know beforehand, if someone had told me, hey, this is actually a real band, because it's told in interview form. The way the author wrote this book, it's all dialogue. So you feel like this is a real band from the 70s, and sh the author did such a great job of capturing what it must have been like to be in a band in the 1970s. Just like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, there were a few twists at the end that I did not see coming. Not like a mystery thriller twist, just a few twists that kind of tug on your heartstrings just a little bit. But I think I'm going to do a book discussion about this book because so many people have read it. I'm going to start doing book discussions, and when you see that, those are for people who have read the book. I'm going to be taking books that so many of us in the booktube community have read, and I want to start having conversations. And if you have not read the book, don't watch them because they will be spoiler, spoiler, 
spoilers, spoilers. But Daisy Jones and the Six, I know why so many of you loved it, and I also gave this one five stars. Now the next two books I have not read yet. I have the May Club pick and then I have a makeup book because I told you guys I missed a lot of months in her book club so I'm doing some makeup books. That's why we have four books each time. And the May book, oh, let me show it to you. The May book club pick was From Scratch by Timby Locke and this is actually a memoir. I don't think I've read a memoir in quite a long time and this sounds like a great one. Timby says that it is love at first sight when she meets her husband on the streets of Florence, Italy. But unfortunately, his traditional Sicilian family disapproves of him marrying a black American woman. They decide to move to Los Angeles and set up their careers there and they adopt a beautiful baby girl and it seems after a while that they finally get to their happy point where they have a very happy, fulfilling marriage and no one is interfering and you know, they get to a really good place. Unfortunately, the happy ending doesn't last for very long because her husband, Sarah, ends up passing away from cancer. And I just want to read you the second paragraph that's in the description because I think it really sums it up better than I ever could with my bullet points. So this is what it says. In the wake of crisis, Tempe sought solace in Sicily, her husband's homeland. There she found nourishment, literally and spiritually, at her mother-in-law's table. And with the healing gifts of simple fresh food, the embrace of a close-knit community, and the power of enduring love, she developed the strength to step into a new life. And from what I heard from Reese Witherspoon on her Instagram, she says this is a big book about forgiveness. Because obviously she's going to end up connecting with the family that disapproved of the marriage in the first place. She said to read this book with a box of tissues. We never seem to have tissues anywhere, so I guess I'm going to be reading this with this. Don't judge me. The next book I picked, I can't remember what month it was from, but I picked it because it seemed very light and obviously this book from scratch is going to be a very heavy book if I've got to read it with a roll of toilet paper. So I decided I was going to read The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. Now I loved the movie Practical Magic and this is a prequel to Practical Magic. Hopefully I'm showing you the poster from Practical Magic, it had Sandra Bullock and it had Nicole Kidman who played sisters and they go to live with their aunts who are older. So in this book, this book is about the aunts when they were children. It's set in 1960s New York City. And it shows how the two older aunts dealt with their gifts as they were growing up, starting from being children along with their brother. And I'm assuming the brother must be the father of the two girls from Practical Magic because I don't know, it just seems like that would work out right. To me and just like in the movie practical magic if you haven't seen the movie practical magic you should definitely check it out but one of the big big things in practical magic is this family has been cursed like since the 1600s i don't remember why or what the reasoning is but the curse is if you fall in love then the person you fall in love with will eventually pass away and that's a big part of the movie practical magic and they mention in the synopsis that they have to pay attention to that rule too and so i don't know how that's going to play out i know the aunts were really big in practical magic about don't fall in love so i don't know if they're going to fall in love and have their hearts broken but like i said just knowing i'm going back into that world of practical magic and going into a prequel and getting to see the aunts when they're younger this just sounds like a really fun read and it sounds like a good balance to have this one and this one since they're so different i think they'll be a really great balance to read them both but i'm so excited about reading both of them and I'm really excited about the fact that next month I'll be able to tell you how they were, how I rated them, if I liked them, whether I think you should pick them up, and then I will introduce the June book club pick and my next makeup book. So like I said, from here on out, we will be having four books in each one of these Reese Witherspoon book club reviews. So now it is time to get to my booktuber shout out. And guys, this booktuber is pretty new, but she has really been impressing me, really impressing me. It is Lindsay from Lindsay Literally. And you you would think that she'd been making booktube videos forever. She is just a natural in front of the camera. She's super engaging. She's super funny. And I'm just so impressed that somebody right out the gates is making such high quality videos. So definitely check her out. I don't even think at this point, well today, I think she has about 45 subscribers, but she's really good guys. Check her out. I think you'll like her. If you like her, definitely subscribe. And I think my next videos are going to be my books box openings, which are always hilarious since I can't seem to figure out what anything is. So I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.